name is Hannah Mooney. I am the Exhibits, Programs, and Engagement Specialist at the New Bedford Fishing Heritage Center. We are here in our exhibit, More Than a Job, Work and Community in New Bedford's Fishing Industry. The title of this exhibit comes from the idea that over all the years when we've talked to members of the fishing industry, they've described their work as more than a job. It's a culture, it's a way of life, it's a community. So this exhibit looks at um, all those different themes as well as explores themes of immigration, sustainability, um, and the history of organized labor on the working waterfront. We are now standing on the deck of our boat in the New Bedford Fishing Heritage Center. New Bedford is the nation's most valuable fishing port and has been for over two decades now. Um, a lot of that value is from the scallop industry. Um, so on this side of the deck, um, we look a little bit further at the actual process of um, catching scallops. Um, so this is our dredge. This is a third scale model of the kind of equipment that's actually used to do scalloping. This was built by our friends at uh, Blue Fleet Welding. Our entire deck area was built by our friends at Fairhaven Shipyard. Um, so this kind of gives you a sense of the real scale of the work that fishermen do when they're out at sea. Um, as well as the opportunity to get a little more interactive with um, a type of work that you don't get to see when you're on shore. This kind of work happens far, far away from where we are in New Bedford right now, hundreds of miles off the coast. This side of the deck represents um, the ground fish industry. So in addition to scallops, um, boats out of New Bedford uh, catch things like flounder um, and haddock and so this side of the boat looks at those kind of fisheries. Um, this is an inter interactive boat deck. You can use the basket in the fish hold. So this is a basket of scallops. These are obviously not real scallops anymore but these are real scallop shells. Um, so out at sea Fishermen who catch scallops, they bring them in over, they bring them in from the ocean in a dredge, and then they get put in baskets, and then they are shucked. So um, the scallops are opened with a knife, and the part that we eat is taken out and cleaned and kept on ice um, until they are brought back to be sold at auction. Fishing is one of the most dangerous industries. You're obviously taking a risk when you go out at sea. So one of the things that we um, talk about, especially with students, is safety at sea. All fishermen have their own survival suits. This keeps them buoyant and warm enough um, so that there is enough time for them to be rescued if they've had to um, jump ship. In addition to the suit itself, um, attached to the front of the survival suit are things like a strobe light and a, a GPS tracking system that when it hits the water will activate and send, send a location signal out. 
When we have school groups, we often um, have races, competitions, to see who can put the survival suits on the fastest. Um, we have survival suits in all sizes, from kids to very, very tall adults. So for over 20 years, we have been collecting oral history interviews with members of the fishing industry. So one of the things we really wanted to include in this exhibit um, were some of those oral history excerpts. So throughout the exhibit, there are these listening stations on some of the content panels where you can pick up the headphone device, press a button and listen to a story from somebody in the industry. Also, there are QR codes that you can scan with a smartphone and listen to them on your own device if you don't want to pick up a headset. Um, so these panels look at some of the main topics that we explore throughout the exhibit, from the history of early pioneers, immigration and the American dream, um, through unions and associations, as well as sustainability and environmental regulations. I am here now in our wheelhouse area. This was also built by our friends at Fairhaven Shipyard. So this gives you a sense of some of the different equipment that is used for navigational purposes while on board a fishing vessel. Um, we also have, um, we also have a screen that plays um, some at sea footage so that you can get a real sense of what it might look and feel like to be um, aboard a fishing vessel. We even have some sounds that set the scene, a little ambiance. Things like a foghorn or a mayday call or even some seagulls. So this is a really fun interactive area that kids and families love to engage with. In addition to our deck and our wheelhouse, we also have um, some things that you might see uh, inside a fishing vessel. We've got some bunks. We also have a galley table like you'd have in the kitchen area of a boat. Um, you uh, when you sit down at our galley table, you can, again, pick up a receiver and hear some sea stories. These ones are really fun. These cover topics like workplace pranks or storms and close calls, as well as unusual catches, which are things besides fish that get brought up in fishing nets. Some of the things that they might bring up are um, 
people have brought up airplane pieces before, um, plates, cups, bowls, anything that might have fallen off an ocean liner, um, sometimes fossils. I mentioned unusual catches, and we do actually have a whole case of things that fishermen or families have brought into us that they have caught. Um, some of these things include petrified quahogs, lots of different bottles and pottery. We also have a mastodon tooth that was uh, caught up in a fishing net on George's Banks. George's Bank uh, used to be land. Um, it is now underwater, so that is where a mastodon tooth was found. Okay. In addition to the many men and women who go offshore to actually fish, there are thousands of people in New Bedford who work in what we refer to as shoreside industries. Um, these include net makers, seafood processors, lumpers, who are the people who actually take the fish off the boats when they come back in, um, fuel barge operators, um, runs the gamut. They do really important work to uh, keep the industry going. And without all these shoreside workers, we would not be able to eat and enjoy all of our seafood. So this section of the exhibit looks at lumpers. Lumpers are the people who actually go down and they remove the fish off of fishing boats. So when a fish comes back in from its trip out to sea and it's full of fish that has been caught, the lumpers use tools like these pitchforks to take the fish out of the boat and get it up to the places where it's gonna be processed or sold at auction. So this section of the exhibit looks at the seafood auction. Today, the seafood auction runs entirely online and bidders from all over the world uh, bid on New Bedford seafood. But in the past, the auction took place in person. We have some footage of uh, the former auction when all the bids were placed on blackboards and the people were actually physically in the room making their bids. Um, in addition to the auction, some other things that have to happen to fish once they get back to shore are the fishermen have to get paid. So that happens through settlement houses. The settlement houses take care of making sure that the fishermen are paid and that they have paid their share of things like food that was uh, eaten on the trip, the gas that was used by the boat, things of that nature. And then the last thing that obviously has to happen before we eat fish is it has to be processed. So there's several seafood processing plants in New Bedford where the workers um, get the fish skinned and filleted and ready to be sent out and eaten. This section of the exhibit looks at some more recent um, changes that have happened on the working waterfront. This area looks at themes of environmental changes, changes to the labor system, and changes to the workforce and more recent immigration. Um, there were a series of union strikes in the 1980s that ended unions on the working waterfront and that coincided with um, an influx of immigrants from Guatemala and Honduras. And so a lot of those more recent immigrants have found work in New Bedford's fishing industry. Um, there's still one union that operates on the waterfront that is the Longshoremen's Union. While they maybe don't deal with fish directly, they are offloading and onloading cargo um, out of the port of New Bedford.
This is a section of the exhibit that people love because this section looks at family and community, which is a really integral part of the fishing industry. Once again, you're able to hear stories from um, fishing families, people who are part of this community and to really get a sense of what life is like for those people and how that's unique. Um, so we've, we have stories, we have lots of images of families, um, lots of images of family owned boats. And so you have speakers, is that what the couches are for? I mean the chairs are for? So the chairs and the little library in this section just serves as an open invitation um, for people to make themselves at home here. We do find that this um, is a community space and that's something we love about the Fishing Heritage Center is um, how at home it seems to make people feel. This is our nickname wall. Uh, people who work in the fishing industry tend to give and receive nicknames. So these are probably a very small selection of nicknames from the New Bedford waterfront. These were collected over a 50 year period um, and given to us. Um, these are almost all male names. There is one woman on this nickname wall, Fish Mary was the only female lumper who worked in the fishing industry in New Bedford in the 1950s and 60s. Sustaining the resource is a really important part of the fishing industry. Um, without sustainability, the industry would not exist as it does today. So this section of the exhibit looks at the ways that researchers and fishermen are working together to um, sustain the resource and keep the industry going. Um, another part of sustainability is sustaining community um, and keeping the workforce um, engaged and going because fishing is really what drives New Bedford's economy and um, without sustainability, it wouldn't exist. We often get asked what we as the consumer can do to support New Bedford seafood. Um, and one thing you can do is to make sure you're buying your seafood locally. Um, asking where your fish is from um, and buying from people in New Bedford who um, are selling New Bedford product. Um, another thing you can do is to uh, try out a species of fish you've never had before. These are usually what we would refer to as an underutilized species, um, and that's something like redfish or haddock or monkfish, something that you maybe wouldn't normally see on a menu, but um, is a little more abundant than things like cod. Um, so just trying out a different type of seafood that you might not have had or heard of before um, is a really great way to support local seafood as well as support sustainable seafood. We think that the story of New Bedford's fishing industry is really important to understanding New Bedford currently as well as historically and we hope that these exhibits um, are able to introduce people in New Bedford as well as around the world to um, the history and importance of the fishing industry um, and to prove that this work is more than a job, it's really a way of life for thousands of people in New Bedford. <laughs>